welcome everyone to episode two of Project Passion, a brand new podcast that is on the Lumberzack channel. Uh, if you haven't checked out episode one, you can finish this one first and then go back to the other one. Uh, but we just want to make sure you check out all the episodes because we got some really cool guests on here. Uh, before we get real deep into it, uh, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, hit subscribe, but click on the bell when that comes up. Make sure that you get notifications for uh, all the episodes and all the content that we're putting out on here. Um, liking this video also helps us in the algorithm. So it helps push this content out to more people, which hopefully you're a supporter of. But uh, today I have a very, very special guest, a good friend of mine. Go ahead and introduce yourself. The very best of friends. Best uh, of friends. I, I'm Sarah Nishimoto. Ian. I'm, I'm best friends with Zach. We've known each other for 20 plus years. Yeah. Just kidding. At least. How long how long's it been? Uh, five years? Like five years? At least. Six years? Like, yeah, five or six. We knew each other a little bit before we actually like became friends. Um, but uh, quickly bonded over some great things. And one of those is the subject matter of this episode. So, Sarah, why don't you tell me what is your passion? My passion is the office. So you just love going to work that much, right? Oh, not that office. The okay. TV show, The Office. You're talking about like The Office. The Office. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be sitting there thinking like, The Office is a passion. Well, I would say if you do it right, it really is. It is. So let's let's just dive right in. When did you when did you get on the the office train? Okay, well, I jumped on like pretty quickly because I'm a little bit older than you are and I was able to watch the show when it first came out. Uh, so I didn't catch the first season when it first came out, but I quickly caught up on the second season. Um, and back in those days, you had to wait a whole week for another episode. And then the season ended like in May and then you had to wait until September-ish to, for the new season. So um, I caught... I, I caught it pretty early. You weren't you weren't just one of those bandwagon people. You were yeah. like, I'm here at the beginning. Did did you find did you watch it by yourself or do you and So I sometimes watched it with my brother and then uh, part of the time I was at college and I would watch it with my friend in college. I'd go over to their dorm room and watch it, would have watch parties and then um I was dating my husband at the time and we would usually call each other afterwards and kind of talk about the show. De- debrief the episodes, yep. right? So, uh, were you one of those people that, as soon as like it started picking up a little bit, that you were telling everybody about it? Like you're like, "Hey, you've gotta, you've gotta watch this show." Well, I guess that too. But like, what was the initial hook for you? Like, what was? Um, I don't even remember. I wish I could remember which episode was my first one, but I was. Just- it just made me laugh so much. I was like, I, I have to keep watching this. So I, I, I think it was like in the second season somewhere. And um, I just couldn't stop. I, this, and this might be controversial. Oh. It, potentially. I know, right? I prefaced that we weren't going to talk about anything controversial, but now here I am. Here we are. The first, ep- or the first few episodes, especially the first season, is not the greatest. In my opinion, like it, it's not the the characters that we come to know and love. Right. Like Michael Scott is missing half of his hair yes. in the first season. Like I, I don't know. Like so you, but you were in from the beginning. Yeah, I was. I was maybe I'm I, an OG Office fan. Maybe I'm not a true. But like I like I like the earlier episodes. That like that's definitely a fact. But. There are so many different things that I'm like, I feel like once season two hit, they were like, we have, we have a show that we think is really good, but we need to make these few changes, you know? And there's, there's some very distinct ones. Yeah. Like Michael Scott's hair. That's like true. that's a, that that's a big, a change. One. he just gained, he just gained hair out of nowhere. It's magic. So we're, we're on the, we're on the subject of watching the office as a passion. I wholeheartedly agree. Mm-hmm. So, like, why is it a pa- – like, not just, you know, hey, I enjoy this this show. Um, it's got, you know, some great stuff, and now I want to tell everybody about it. But, like, why? Like, what has made it, it – and from 
going from a hobby to like a passion where you're wearing your Shroot Farms t-shirt. You've got your quotes all over the place. You have a copy of a book called Somehow I Manage written by me featuring me on the cover. Yeah. Uh, so if I can, it. if I can, if you can send me a picture of that, I'll throw it in this. I'll throw it in this so yeah. everybody can yeah. see. Do um, have it. When, yeah. When did it, you're like, this is, this is a passion of mine. Yeah. Well, I guess it's kind of hard to pinpoint when it turned into a passion, but I think now when I watch it, it's on Netflix. It kind of, um, it it's not me. on Netflix. Well, no, uh, oh, sorry. But when it was on Netflix yeah. um, <clears throat> and you could binge watch it, like, it just reminded me of my college days and, you know, I wish there was a way to know that you're in the good old days before you actually left them. Um, One of the best lines. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of like that for me. It brings back a lot of good memories. Like when I was in college, I had the office theme song as my ringtone. Um, and like I said, I, we had watch parties and talked about it with Koji, watched it with my brother. And it's just, it's good comedic relief for me. I like to zone out. It's a comfort. Mm. And there's a lot of, I mean, there's just so much funny stuff in it. So there, there really, there's, there's also so much stuff that makes me want to like go hide, like Ooh, the in, the infamous Scott's Tots Scott's episode. Tots. The second that episode hits, like in the order of me watching it, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I can handle this. I mean, I, you you definitely have to be ready for it. Um, you have to, to emotionally be in a good place. Prepared. <laughs> so, but I would rather watch Scott's Tots than Andy's play. Uh, oh, that episode, I can't. I you don't like, that you don't like the, the, the Ballad of Sweeney Tots. Todd? No, <laughs> <laughs> I do not. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I'll give you that. It's, <laughs> it's not great. It's not. But there's this, there's that wholesome moment at the end of that episode, though, where like everybody. Like everybody knows that it was not great, but then they just hang out with Andy and they're like, oh yeah, like, you know, we're just, we're hanging out and they're like, hey, we want, we want you to sing, you know, and they just have, they just, I, like, that's one of the things I love about The Office is just those moments that are just like the serious, not like serious as in like lack of comedy or anything, but those moments that you're like, this isn't just oscar throwing a cat through a roof right or a ceiling you know like there's some really deep storytelling that is being done over the course of all the how many seasons eight nine seasons nine, nine seasons over the course it. of nine seasons mm -hmm. which is a lot of, there's a lot of episodes it is. um you know so i guess as we're on this topic, what do you think, what do you think people have, like misconceptions that people have about The Office? Well, I think, I think some people watch like the pilot episode and they're like, oh, Michael Scott is a jerk and he's the worst. There's a lot of hate for Michael show. Scott. Yeah. And you know what? He's not really a jerk. So like you were talking about more serious moments and stuff. One of my favorites is when Michael Scott is the only one from the office who shows up to Pam's art show and says that he's so proud of her. Um, he's not a jerk. Yeah. And that's a big misconception and, people have. Yeah. Not only cares. does he show up and tell her that he's proud of her, he's like, I want to buy this. Like yeah. he, I, to my knowledge, he was the first person that was like, I want to invest that's true. in your art, the thing that you have done. And, uh, you know, the things, cause, cause there's some people that make the argument that like, you know, Michael Scott's a bad person that, you know, he's misogynistic and all these things, the things that he does that are bad, the show is very clear that it's bad. Like, <laughs> like they don't, they don't try to be like, sure Oh, Michael did this thing and this is very good. Right? right. But you see this, this progression throughout the show of him becoming less so mm -hmm. for the most part that he's like, he's growing as a person. He does. He's like, he's developing as a person. And I think that that's something that we can all relate to. Mm -hmm. And especially when, uh, when Holly comes in, yeah. you know, I like, I, I a hundred percent team Holly from the beginning, you know, from episode one. And then what's his face shows up. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Now her, her, boyfriend oh, for a while yeah what is his yeah name? that's gonna what is me. his name um 
Yeah. Wow. We're oh, we're crap. failing right now. <laughs> I want to say it starts with an A. But I was going to say Aaron, but I don't know that that's Aaron. right. Um, AJ. It's AJ. AJ. Yeah. AJ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate that guy. Ew, so you just repress it because uh, he's such a jerk just, and we hate him. So yeah. But yeah, there, there's just these. There's this clear like. I don't know, development of like characters in the story. I'm going to throw you a curveball question. I didn't prepare you with what, like what's your favorite like character development in, in the show? You, you look at all the characters from across the seasons, you know, what, what would you say that is your favorite, I guess, storyline or like this character from the beginning to the end, I was a huge fan of. Um, Honestly, I guess I'd have to say Michael Scott because because of how much he's changed and that that development and I just love all of the moments that we get throughout all the seasons of like what a good guy he actually is and how much he actually does care for his employees and um, that it's like a family to him because um, he doesn't have a family of his own. <laughs> um, I love I love when he uh, records the video for his future children. Yes, like in case he dies, but he doesn't have kids. <laughs> He's like, well, in case I die. <laughs> <laughs> I I think one of my favorite episodes, just like about Michael Scott's relationship, is uh, the office chair lady. Yes. <laughs> where they're like trying to search her down, and at the end, Dwight's like so excited. He's like, "Hey, I found her." She's dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then they like go to, don't they, they go to the gravesite. They go, yeah. <laughs> like, they go. To, to pay their respects for, for what could have been, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. So I, I guess on the, on the topic of, uh, of content, what's, what's your all time favorite episode? My all time favorite is the injury. It's in season two when Michael grills his foot. That's pretty early on. Yeah. Yeah. What, so what do you what do you like about it so much? I mean, <sighs> it is just a funny like it's hilarious that he burns his foot in a George Foreman and wraps it in like bubble Bar wrap. <laughs> and there's just so many good good lines in that show. Um when they're like, Where are you shipping your foot? Where are you shipping your foot? And, um then when Ryan ground, grounds up the aspirin and puts it in his pudding <laughs> and then it's like a complete ninety. He's like, Ryan, Ryan's kindness healed my foot. <laughs> um, and I also love when he asks Pam to put butter on his foot. <laughs> oh, and gosh. He's like, but I got country crock. There's these, yeah, I, I forgot <laughs> about that. That is such a cringy moment. Like thinking about somebody just like buttering up your foot. Yeah. I, no, no, thank you. Do you have uh, do you have any other honorable mentions of of things that you're like? This is this was a solid episode. Um, I mean, I think that it's fun to see how the storyline with uh, Dwight and Angela kind of starts in that episode too. How um, she's so concerned about because he hits his head on the pole, gets a concussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Concussion guy, and um, then like how she's just so concerned and. Pam notices it and makes sure to like, like tell Oscar discreetly, yeah. <laughs> but just letting Angela know. So that's me. And I also love um, how Michael Scott just he thinks he's disabled and he has Billy Merchant come in <laughs> in his wheelchair. <laughs> and like Billy that's says, such a that's such a Michael how Scott long does thing. Does it take you to brush your teeth in the morning? <laughs> wow, wow, it's like five times as long as me. It's there's there's just so many I, like somehow there there are moments in the office that are relatable that aren't relatable at all. <laughs> like you're like you're watching something and like I've never I've never cooked my foot in a George Foreman. Me I like I that's just not something I've ever done. But there's something about me being like I want the attention today. <laughs> like, I need my I I get I get told this all the time. But the the scene in the office that perfectly sums me up. Uh, is when I can't remember why he's upset, but Michael's upset and he's laying down by the reception desk, and, and I can't remember if it's Aaron or Pam. I, I'm Please thinking Pam. it's I'm thinking it's Pam, yeah. And she goes, "You you have an office." 
goes, no, it's okay. I like the attention. <laughs> and I'm like, there's like some days I'm like, Michael, I get that. Like, I understand where you're coming from because At least you there's, own just, it. there's just days that I'm like, yeah, I just want the attention. That's funny. So we've, we're talking about some great episodes, some great stories. Mm-hmm. What's a not great thing? I know. I'm I'm like, hey, tell me about tell me about your absolute love and passion for this. What's your I guess biggest regret about the story? What do you wish was different? Cuz I think everybody has something. Yeah. So one would be I wish we could have seen Michael and Holly get married. Like I wish that storyline would have continued instead of just him moving to Colorado. Um, that is sad. That was sad. That would have been fun to watch. And the, like, did they have kids? I mean, did Michael Scott finally become a father? I would like to know that. I'd like to think. Well, you do see kids. in the last episode, he's got like eight phones with all of his uh, with all of the photos. That's true. But yeah, you don't you don't actually get to see the. And why didn't Holly come with him to the wedding? She should have come with him. Yeah. I, I the the sad the sad part is it's probably just because they didn't want to pay the actress for Holly. Probably. Or maybe she so. was unavailable. <laughs> right. <clears throat> but another thing that I really don't like is in some of the later seasons where they have this drama with Jim and Pam. Like, oh yeah. And, and like with Kathy and then with Brian, the boom guy, and, and I don't know like to her. And I hated were that. They, were they just trying to spice it up where they're just like, oh, we need something different. We're running out of seasons. We're running out of ideas for episodes, uh, you know, and they were just like, let's just throw in this potential uh, scandal, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just not, it's just kind of sucks, it does. but I'll tell you, I'll tell you it. what my, my biggest thing that I was upset about when it came to uh, the office story was how they treated Andy at the end. Oh, how they how they wrote his character not not necessarily like how they were mean to him or rude, to him, you know, like making fun of him or whatever, but just the fact that like they wrote his character and they were like he he, he was becoming a great manager. He was, and then all of a sudden. They were like, well, let's have this whole boat episode where he just goes out and he just becomes an a hole, yeah. you know, <laughs> and like and then he comes back and then they I just feel like they've ruined his character because they're so uh, there was the episode where he goes and he gets the tattoo on his butt, you know, yeah. and and Jim has that great line that he says to me, he says, hey, we like you as the manager. Mm-hmm. You're doing a good job. You don't have to continue to like try to impress us. And to me, I'm like, oh, wow. And, and I think at the end, I'm glad that Dwight ended up becoming the man. Like, that, that seemed like a fitting thing. But I still think that Andy could have been the manager for a while, and it would have been a great story. You know, I really liked Andy as a character because you look at his first appearance and then his, like, I think he has great character growth. He does. From punching the wall a couple Narda. times. But like, you know, yeah. all the things that, like he goes through and then eventually he's like, he becomes a manager and he's just trying so hard to impress everybody. And then they have like, Oh, let's have him go off on a boat and come back and treat everybody like crap. And then he goes crazy. And then everybody like, I don't know what they were trying to accomplish there, but I, I always think that that's my biggest problem when it came to the story of the office, you know, that makes sense. Is it just didn't seem I guess in my mind, I'm like, it just didn't seem fair to his character. Yeah. You yeah, because he had come so far and then just to kind of ruin it so much. Yeah. And like in the last episode, they kind of redeem him. Like they give him the whole graduation speech. At, yeah, uh, that's true. At Cornell. Oh, gosh. What's the school? Cornell, what was it? Right? Cornell. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like. <laughs> Or when Dwight goes and he applies there and they interview each other for <laughs> admission. That was great. That was a, those were great moments. Um what about what about some uh some fun facts? Things that, you know, maybe people don't know about the office. 
I like I love I love seeing a lot of the like behind the scenes. Some of the yeah. best deleted scenes and outtakes of any show are from The Office. Yeah, for sure. So in and when you watch it on Peacock, they have a lot of those deleted scenes and behind the scenes stuff. It's pretty it's pretty fun to watch those. Um, one of my one of my favorite things is that the like goodbye between Michael and Pam was authentic. Like mm. Pam was actually saying bye to Michael. Jenna was saying goodbye to Steve. Like yeah. Um, and the d- just different things like that were like <laughs> those were the saddest episodes, and and it was like genuine emotion um, because they were all sad that they were leaving in real life and yeah. Oh, that line, like, <laughs> like Pam's goodbye to Michael is very uh, like heartwarming, but mm-hmm. Jim's goodbye yeah. is it just like, it time. gets me. Yeah. It gets me every time where he's just like, I'll tell you how great of a boss you've been. And I'm just like, oh, uh, like I'm, I'm literally tearing up right now. Just like thinking about that moment and thinking about the emotion that's like captured in that. Yeah. I always love seeing too, like, it's, it's crazy because the office looks very, um, like fluid and unchoreographed, mm-hmm. but from what I've heard, it was it, it was very choreographed. Like the from the camera, like how the camera would move to where the people were going to, the, like the gym looks, you know, as they're as he's looking right. over at the camera, like, hey, did you see that? They were all super, super, super choreographed, like down to a T. And then I thought this was crazy that they would like film all of that. And then they would do one last take where it was just like, okay, do what you think would be best in this scene, you know? And then hearing eventually like some of the really funniest, like the funniest moments were completely unchoreographed. And from, I mean, from what I've heard, a lot of it came down to Steve Carell uh, and Rain Wilson, like leading the show Mm -hmm. of like just doing crazy off the wall things. I'll tell you what the biggest moment for me that I was like, what, when it came to behind the scenes was who Moe's really was <laughs> <laughs> like that. He was like one of the main like guys that created the show. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I like, I respect the fact that you wrote this show like, and, and put so much into behind the scenes for it. And you created yourself to be this character is. that is just off the wall insane. Like, yeah, truly, yeah. truly, like, clinically insane. So, like, um, Moe's is kind of a, a background character. What is your favorite? Who's your favorite kind of um, not main character in the office? Like, you... Oh, man. I, well, I don't know. I think he would probably be considered more of a main character. Uh, I was a huge fan of Robert California. Yeah. And I like, I, I think he's more in the main character category, Probably, but just the wild, like it's just the wildest things that like he would say and do. I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah. Or one of my favorite really moments wild. when they're, when they're interviewing for uh, who's taking over <laughs> for Michael and they have all these actors and stuff. And uh, was it Jim Carrey? <laughs> comes yes. in, he's like, Oh yeah, my family's in the finger lakes. <laughs> I got to get back to the finger lakes. Yeah. People go missing in the finger lakes, you know, That's great. <laughs> it's like, like, I don't know. That's one of my favorite moments in the entire <laughs> office. Like, it's just, it's so stupid, That's funny. but so I, yeah, I don't know. I guess minor characters. Uh, what's, what's his name that works in the warehouse? Nate? Um, yeah, because that's yeah. mine. <laughs> he's he's that he's guy. a solid choice. <laughs> I don't technically have a hearing problem, uh, but sometimes when there's a lot of noise <laughs> going on, it's hard for me to understand. <laughs> oh, I relate so much to Nate. So that's he I mean. like he is definitely a spirit animal for <laughs> for some people. There's just there's so many good uh, side characters, mm-hmm. you know. I think, yeah, I I got to say, though, I hate Gabe. Yeah. I, like, I know he's not a side character, but I just, like, he's a dude that's creepy. And, like, yeah, there's creepy people. Like, and Michael Scott can be creepy. But he's just creepy in a way that I'm, like, 
I can't even like this guy a little bit. I can't even like there's I don't think there's a single moment in the office that I'm like, oh, I feel for Gabe. <laughs> like yeah. just like I I respect this this guy. So but well mm-hmm. I know uh we could probably sit here all day and oh. just talk about different episodes of the office in different moments. And maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do a part two where we just sit down and we just talk about, we go through every single episode, you know? Um, I know that the ladies of the right. office, office have ladies. their podcast and uh, maybe Jenna Fisher, you would like to become a, uh, a guest on this podcast. Um, so if this stumbles across your YouTube recommended <laughs> and you watch it and you're like, Oh, the office, what's this about? Um, and you would like to become a guest on my podcast. Um, that would be awesome. I think that would be a win all the way around. I don't think anybody loses anything by that. Yeah. Oh, so. So, so before we conclude, who are you? What character on The Office are you? Who am I? Um, I, I have been told that I am very close to an Andy. An Andy. And maybe, that, maybe that's why I am so <laughs> – I, I feel so much – for the fact that his story at the end just wasn't just wasn't that great, wasn't you know. Well, what about you? We'll we'll, I, we'll, we'll conclude I'm, on this. Thought. I'm Pam. I'm 100% yeah, Pam. I I hundred percent I hundred percent get that. Uh, do they uh, do they ever? They don't ever reveal what's in the tea kettle, right? The no, but pot. I think they did on the Office Ladies podcast. I haven't listened to that because I think wow. uh, Jenna kept the note. I wasn't there. Because I think it was a real note. Like, it was a real, something real and special between uh, John Krasinski and Jenna Fisher. Yeah. So, I would want to, I would want to keep that secret. I wouldn't feel, I feel like people need to stop pressuring her to be like, hey, you got to tell us what's going on. What's in this? You know, sometimes people just want their things. So, well, it has been a fun, about half an hour, just sitting down talking about the office it's a lifestyle choice really if 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 by the end of this podcast you didn't understand that watching the office is a lifestyle choice you need to listen to it again go back to the beginning listen start over listen to it again um but just a reminder go ahead and uh click the like button hit subscribe um you you don't understand just how much hitting a like button helps push this stuff in the algorithm um youtube is very very specific uh, about all this stuff. So if you enjoyed it, like I said, hit the like button, hit subscribe, click the bell. That way you get notifications. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.